Well, it's high time we talk about luggage and suitcases again because I have a trip coming up and, well, I managed to score one of these. So, yeah. Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Gooch. And today, stepping away from tech products, but getting back into more of the travel videos that I've been doing over the last few years. Um, this is an undeniably amazing looking piece of luggage. Now, I per love the orange color. Of course, this is a special edition color. They, they're typically in your traditional aluminum color or black um, or even a gold. This is the Mars orange color that they offered. And if you're not familiar with what this is, this is the Ramoa Original Cabin. Uh, that is what suitcases is in fancy Mars is what they called it. Now, I actually first came across this on a trip I did to Las Vegas back in May with my wife. Um, tickets and everything were ridiculously cheap because of the pandemic, and I couldn't say no to an offer to take my wife to Vegas for a few days, and it was a great trip. One of the things, when we were walking through Caesars Forum shops, uh, I came across the Ramoa store, and I've always wanted to see one. Now, I'm a huge fan of high-end goods, high-end electronics, everything. And that includes luggage because the more you travel, the more you really appreciate a good piece of luggage. I've been looking for get to getting an upgraded piece of luggage for a while, for a couple of years, two, three years now. And I've looked at the Ramoa. I've always immediately clicked back out immediately. As soon as I see the price of it, I'm just like, <laughs> no, I'm just not the guy to spend a thousand dollars on a piece of luggage. I don't see it. Right. Um, a friend of mine actually purchased uh, a Way Travels aluminum carry-on, which I actually recommended to him because after seeing it and seeing the price, not personally seeing it, but on the website, looking at some videos, looking at different things about it, I was really impressed by it, especially at half the cost of what this costs. Um, I recommended it to him because he's also not one. He didn't really want to spend $500, but then when he was thinking about it more, he's doing more traveling. He wants a really good piece of carry-on luggage. He bought it. He loves it. I mean, I agree. I have seen it. I have touched it now after he got it, and I also liked it. And actually, I was considering getting one of those, and I still held off because I wanted to keep, you know, keep saving money um, for my vacation coming up. Actually, here in a couple weeks. So that said, I continue to use this is my low gel groove frame. If you've watched my videos, I did a review of this kind of when I first got it. Uh, that is six years ago now. Um, my wife, after I got this, liked it so much, I got my wife an exact same one of this, just in a different color. And I'll be honest, I love this suitcase. I really do. It is not everything I want in a suitcase. It isn't. But a really good piece of suitcase, or piece of luggage. Um, I wish that they would continue this, this way of thinking because I am not a zipper lover. I dislike zippers in my luggage with a passion. I hate them. Um, and I understand that some of you guys might love that. But I don't. I love more of the briefcase style. I understand that the more, the harder you make the piece of luggage, the less it's going to expand. It's not going. It has to. Everything has to kind of confine into it. And I've learned to deal with that. And I actually prefer that way. In all reality, I really do. So coming back to this, stop by the Ramoa store in Las Vegas at Caesar's Forum Shops, and they had one of these in this color, exactly like you see it here today. And of course, I was just like, oh no. That's an awesome color. The color's not going to drive me to pay that much money for a suitcase, but I, that's an awesome color. And so when I was talking to him, I I, I have to see this one. So uh, the person there at the store pulled it out, uh, did the whole spiel on the whole thing, and I was impressed by everything. And then he gave it to me to roll around the store and, and uh, feel what it felt like. And, and I was blown away by the quality of the craftsmanship that went into this piece of luggage. I was, I was blown away by... The smoothness of the casters or the wheels, right? These wheels are go far beyond any set of wheels on any luggage I've ever touched in my life. It is amazing how smooth this thing just glides along. Um, you go through the, the rivets, the placement of everything, how everything is built on this thing. You can tell it's top notch. Top notch. They put a five-year warranty on it so long as you register it. You get a five-year warranty on it. Um, but they have, uh, all over the place, all over the world, 
Ramoa has locations where you can get it repaired. It's not a piece of uh, it's not a piece of luggage that you buy and then when it breaks you discard and then you buy the next one. Like most luggage out there. This is a high quality piece of luxury luggage that you fix if it if it goes bad. Now, Ramoa is is known for their look. They've looked this way kind of since the 30s. Uh, the company came out um, boy, a long time ago, but in the, I think it was 1937 is when they, they came out with the first piece of aluminum luggage uh, based on the Yunkers F-13 plane, which has these uh, parallel uh, lines, I guess, as you want to say, in the aluminum itself, in the structure, which basically gives it rigidity and sh it holds its shape. Um, and they've been doing that ever since. And they're known to be kind of a bomb-proof piece of luggage. But in this case, they've refined it to the point where it looks even better than it did back then. And they also, I mean, if you look at those old, old Ramoa suitcases, they still look great. And the thing about aluminum is, yeah, you're gonna get some scratches on it. You're most likely, if not certainly, gonna get some dents on it. But that's kind of like a good piece of leather, a good leather product good. It's gonna patina, it's gonna show its age. It's gonna demonstrate to you, hey, I've been around for a while but you still love me and I'm taking the beating for you, right? That's what it's kind of there for. So I'm. this will not look like this forever. It will get scratched up. It will get dented up. It will get beat up. And that's kind of like the chicks dig scars things, right? This thing is going to look different as it ages, but it's still going to be beefy and awesome. So um, I wanted to do this original video to kind of demonstrate, I guess, my thinking of why I went with it. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of the small things. I just got this um, just a few days ago. Um, it actually flew all the way from London. And that's because when I actually went to go, after I came back from my Las Vegas trip, about a month later, I said, I really would like to get one of these in that color, but it has to be in this color. I don't want the silver. I want the, the Mars. That's, I, I was, I was blown away by it. I had saved up some money from some things that I had been working on and it's been sitting in this little account and I'm like, ah, I have almost there, but I, at least I can do it. And then I can, I can pay myself back kind of for it. But they were out. They were out of stock. So I called the stores. I tried actually several of the stores in in, uh, in the States. And they checked the system to see if anybody in the United States had it anywhere. And this color was completely sold out everywhere in North America. Um, and so on the website, you could actually hit, you could be notified if they actually come back in stock. I'm like, oh, I'll give it that way. And then I actually called the, the online store. Yeah, we recommend doing that. It's going to be the best uh, case scenario for you to at least um, be kind of on the list to get one once they become available again. Never heard anything, never heard anything, never heard anything, never heard anything. Now it's October, so we're months later. And uh, I called up the store in Dallas, Texas. And uh, um, and I called, I should say, emailed the store in Dallas, Texas. And we're kind of going back and forth on email. Yep, completely sold out in North America. We are not getting anymore. They're, they're gone. They're not coming. This is a special color like they do every year. They do special edition colors. And it's exhausted. They're, it's done. And so then I kind of asked... Well, is there anywhere in the world? And they mentioned that, well, and there are, uh, it looks like about 20 of them left in Europe. So, um, but they're in Europe, right? And so I looked it up and it seemed like Ramon only ships locally. So I kind of reached back out. Hey, any way I could pay for shipping? If I shipped, they shipped it from Europe to the United States for, to my house. Uh, he got a hold of somebody in London at the Herod store uh, in London. And uh, basically they got them in touch directly with me. They were willing to, they had one, they were willing to sell me it, uh, and then ship it directly. Now, one, uh, the VAT taxes, they did have to remove the UK VAT taxes. And then I had to pay the, uh, the import charges and taxes here in the United States. To be honest, it about washed itself out. It didn't really cost me anything extra to other than the small shipping charge they charged me to get it to the United States. So look, Ramoa was awesome to deal with. Uh, the store in Texas, awesome. The store in uh, Harrods, awesome. I have nothing but great things to say about both those guys. So I'll be honest, I'm going to be working with the store in Dallas here locally, at least for my next suitcase. If, and it definitely will come because this thing is amazing and my wife's going to want one. So, but that said, um, <laughs> a lot of air at you. Uh, let's, uh, let's open it up, take a peek at it. This is not a review per se yet because I haven't used it. Um, and I want to do some more videos coming in, in the future on some of the features in this guy. They have compression straps in here that I have never seen in other suitcases personally uh, that I've ever had. So I want to show at least the differences between this. I do have some compression bags that I'm going to be working on showing you guys as well. I'm trying to do as many travel related things as possible, especially with COVID kind of 
trickling down a little bit, little by little. Um, I think more pe people are going to be traveling more and more and more. And I want to get as many travel videos out there as possible. So that said, let's open this guy up. Let's show you what this looks like inside. And uh, at least I can show you between this one. That's uh, always been my tried and true. And then down in the future here soon, I'll have more videos coming. So let's bring it in. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is the locks themselves. So on this guy, it is more of the brief case style. You have basically a single button down here that you, you push and she unlatches. Now the nice thing about this, it automatically holds it away. So if I show you, I just latch it. I don't have to hold it out. It will allow me to open and close this by itself. And then if you can kind of see, maybe if I go by the angle, you can kind of see how it's all out from there. Then you push the top in and you seal it. The other thing about this is actually changing the combination is actually fairly simple. Um, you actually pop it, right? And then you hold this bottom button in and then you, well, they say take a ballpoint pen, but essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually set the code. So you go, oh, I'm sorry. It's hard to do with, with one hand there. But while you're holding it open, you actually twist these numbers. So I, like I set it to 111. Um, you could set it back to 000, or set it to whatever code you want, obviously, right? And then once you release this button, that's what it's gonna be set to. So right now, as you can see, I have it set to 011, and you just make sure that you can push the button in before you latch it, and now the code is 001. If you, as long as you, you know, you're not holding this in, these are easy to turn. But when you're actually setting the combination, it's not easy. You have to push it in, and then you really have to kind of crank these to get the numbers to change. Uh, and that's why they, they recommend putting using a, a ballpoint pen to just kind of slowly do each one at a time. Pretty simple, right? Nothing too fancy in that regard. Okay, so we basically hit the button, buttons down there, they flip up, and then once they flip up, you can open this. Um, and this is kind of what I was talking about with the whole compression item. So let me uh, rotate this a little bit. So it makes try to make it as easy as possible to see. Um, but you can see how there's two little Velcro pieces down here, and this one. These are all tied together as one big strap. So if I undo this, you can see, actually if I undo the Velcro on these two, this piece completely comes out. So I can actually remove this if I don't want it. Also, the Velcro that they use on these straps is not going to be Velcro that's actually going to hook on your fabrics of your clothing at all, whether it's a sweater or whatever. This is very, very different type of Velcro. Um, so it does not hook on other thing, anything other than this vel this uh, stripping here. It also, if you can, if I push it on here, it's not going to be like standard Velcro where it's going to be grabby really, really hard. So I can see that this is going to last a long time. What it does though, is once it hooks onto that, the, the lateral pulling that you're going to get when you're actually tightening this thing, that's what actually is going to hold pretty darn good to be honest about it. So when you get this in here, you just kind of rub it into place. Um, and then you set all your clothing in here and you use this strap here to basically tighten this and this is going to squeeze everything down and then you velcro that strap there as well so nothing too crazy nothing too um insane about this it's pretty simple in how it works now of course each side of these this is just a nice piece of fabric on one side mesh on the other zipper here you can Fill this up with your goods, um, small things, uh, thin things, right? Uh, you can see here on this side, I still have the owner's manuals and stuff like that that came with it. So they're all in here. They have, they have a luggage tag. I've never been one to really put luggage tags on my luggage um, because I don't check my luggage. I keep, this is my carry-on, it stays with me at all times. So I don't really use luggage tags. But if you did, it does come with one. Um, I guess I didn't need to do that. And so it's actually in, this is the uh, owner's manual book. So in here, they have an accessories side of it. And in the accessories side, we get a nice leather luggage tag. So really nice looking. Um, and then of course, you can put your uh, tag inside that right there, but that straps to your luggage. And uh, you can get customized or different colored versions of this guy as well. And then also in here, they do give us some stickers. So if you want to accessorize with some of their stickers, they actually have a whole bunch of stickers you can get on their website. Um, and I'm sure you could probably get them in the store too. 
Um, unfortunately, I don't have a local remote store. I gotta basically go on vacation to get to one. It's nearest one to me is thousands of miles away. And then in here we have the owner's manual, and then the guarantee guide here. And they come, they're all the different languages, so it's either as thick as they are. But that is what comes in the uh, the case essentially. Now I don't know if every single suitcase comes with the next items that I have in here. Um, I'm assuming so, but one is, well, this is kind of, it's a Ramoa book. This is where they stick your receipt. So my receipts in here. Uh, and then there's a business card from Harrods where I actually purchased it from in there. And then I have this clear plastic Ramoa I don't know if you want to say it's a makeup bag or whatever. It's kind of a metallic color. Whether or not I'll use it, I don't know. Probably not. Maybe. We'll see. Nothing too crazy about that. But that's that's the stuff that's in my suitcase currently just because I haven't found a place to put all of it yet. But that's the, the strapping system, which is way different than... Well, let me show you what it looks like on my older low gel, which is kind of a mashup between two completely different items. One is you have a compartment up here. You can see that I have a portion here where I have some chargers and stuff and whatnot. But this is just a, you know, a, a separator item here where it's just your clothing goes in here or whatever put you go in here and then you can separate it with the zipper. No compression at all to that. And then what you would say is your uh, standard compression area is just a standard strap that you strap and then pull tight. It's not going to compress it down, but it is a little bit if it's out a little bit, but um, no general area, just a strap, right? Just to kind of hold things in place. And then I always keep uh, dryer sheets. So I always put in here and keep everything smelling good. Um, in this case, this is an older aluminum frame model. So it has the traditional uh, briefcase style, keyed, not uh, coated, which when I actually got it, I was actually thinking, oh yeah, that's way better. First, I don't check this. I only keep this as a carry-on, so I've never locked it. Not even one time, because I'm keeping it as a carry-on. I don't need to lock it. Second thing, um, well, that key, I have to keep it in one of my carry-on bags, or my other bags. Right now, I usually keep it in here. Yeah, it's floating around in here. Um, I just keep it in here. There it is, which is great and everything, but um, the first time I went, I actually put it in my backpack, and then it was just kind of, well, I never even used it, so I stuck it in here when I got back, and I've never done anything with it since. Uh, I actually would lean away from keyed jacks. I would pr much higher prefer the, the coated jacks, uh, or latches, sorry, um, because they just make one more sense. You're going to be more apt to use them, um, and they're quickly setting, and you don't have to worry about carrying keys at all. So, um, not to say anything against this, I think low gel makes one heck of a suitcase, um, especially for the money. But this is nothing compared to this. Nothing, nothing at all. Um, yeah, I didn't even watch it, did I? Um, the, the wheels are just amazing on this guy. They're actually uh, steel or metal ball bearings in these wheels. Um, and then they kind of have a, I don't know what they call it, a suspension almost to it when they're when they're bouncing around whereas the just the traditional bushing wheels plastic bushing wheels these are fine they work they work you get enough weight on here especially with your backpack and stuff on top or your other pieces of luggage these tend to not be as uh enjoyable to be honest especially if you're going on a carpet these don't do any they're really i i drag it i don't actually keep it upright these darn things i'm amazed at these wheels i really am truly blown away by them so far um especially when i was in the the uh the store i was just blown away by them then so i'm looking forward uh to getting a lot of weight on them uh over the course of a trip to see really how well i like them i have no doubt that i'm going to love them but that said um i wanted to point that out as well um but yeah they, they they don't they don't even compare in terms of the the wheels at all these the Ramoa is just so much so many more light years better now we're going to talk about part of the luggage that is extremely important but maybe sometimes overlooked uh, and that is the handle itself um, 
you can get ones, and most of them have multiple height settings that you can put them at, right? So this has three different height settings that I can actually keep it at. Uh, the downside is the thing I hated about the low gel ever since I got it. Uh, and it's not a terrible, it's not like, oh, I'll never buy that again. It was just kind of like, eh, I wish that was a little bit tighter. And that's just how loose this is, the handle is. On the newer low gel suitcases, they've definitely remedied that. It's a lot better than this, this original one. Um, this has been loose like this ever since I got it. So it's not really failing so much, uh, but it works. Now, of course, I'm comparing this to this suitcase as well as all other suitcases that I've ever used. And there's been other ones I've even done on my channel. Uh, this one is definitely more secure than this guy is. Um, also, um, from what I can tell, I think there are three... Oh, no. This one has... Actually, this one has a lot more than three. I was thinking of uh, the Tumi, I think, is the one that I, I did in a, in a store. It only had, like, three. So this has almost infinite amount of settings. You just basically push the button in, you stop where you want it, and that's the height it's going to be at. All right, and then I think when you get down here, you can't yet. It has to be up here, here or taller. Um, so, not infinite, but you, you set your own height. It's not just the click there, click there, click there, and then that's it. Everything drop below. And that's actually common. The three-stage uh, height adjustment one. Those are common, the most common. Those are the ones I've, I've used in most suitcases I've ever had. Um, and I'm not going to say that I need this different this uh height adjust really because i usually always have it at the top um oh wait that's something i didn't compare <laughs> maybe i should show you this handle on this guy is a good four inches taller than this guy that's something i didn't even think to check that's awesome um because that gives me more capability uh, so obviously if you're taller the Ramoa could be a game changer in that regard because it's a lot longer handle. Let me show you. So that's that's not a little bit. That's that's a lot of it. Okay, I, I wasn't anticipating that. I really wasn't. You know, I don't tr do everything on this channel before I stick it on a video. So that's that's quite a bit long taller. I mean, that's a that's a good amount. Um, smallest setting is here. Smallest setting on this guy is there. So this one goes a little lower than this guy. Not a whole lot. That's only like two inch and a half, give or take. But this one goes a lot taller. So that's awesome. And you can see the wobble in this. Right? This is not so much. This one, yeah. Um, and it's just one of those things. Actually, when I bought this suitcase, that was also one of the gripes that I had heard about on that as well. Oh, how long is this going to last? Because it feels like the hand is going to like just break off. Holy cow. I'll be honest about it. I've gone on a lot of trips with this thing. It's maybe loosened up a little bit more than it did when I was when I first had it, but it is nowhere near close to breaking. So um, low gel, I, I'll be honest, on their newer suitcases, the Cubo and the Voja that I've done videos on as well on this channel, they allow me to do videos on both those. Definitely a tighter handle. I'll give it that. So they definitely fixed that issue. Uh, but the Ramoa, yeah, solid. Very, very solid. You know, I, I know that this is a different color and all, but this little Zendure um, charger that I have, it's actually my favorite small charger I have. I can see where they got their inspiration. Well done. Make me an orange one. Okay, so we went over the gist of a lot of the stuff. There's a lot of stuff I haven't covered on this thing, and more than anything, it's going to be things that I have to learn um, by using. Because me telling you everything about this suitcase without me actually have using it yet, I can't review it. I can't say, yes, this is worth the money, or no, this is definitely not worth the money. I'll be honest about it, though. I'm taking more trips locations. I do take trips for work as well sometimes. Uh, most of those are one to two nights, sometimes three or four nights. Um, as of right now, this is going to be my work one, essentially, uh, because it keeps this one from getting whatever. I don't know. I haven't decided yet so much. I want to see how well this one holds up. I want to see how well it does on my large family vacations that I have lined up. Um, and I have three already lined up in the next six months. So, yes, I'm really looking forward to testing it. Yes, I think it looks amazing. 
I do believe after touching it in the store, but also now having it in my own possession, I think I'm going to have a lot of good things to say about this. But no matter what, you still got to look at how much it costs. Now, retail on this one, which is what you're going to find it at. You're not going to find a deal on these things. It's just not going to happen. Uh, in the United States, it's $1,150. bucks. thats what you're talking about for the Ramoa Original Cabin. Full aluminum. This color, or that color, doesn't really matter the color. It's an amazing piece of luggage. It's not a cheap cost. It is an extremely expensive cost. And I justified it by, well, giving up a few things that I've loved over the years. Um, and I'm fine with them because I haven't used them lately. Lately, so I'm not going to go over that, but I did give up some things. Um, it helps please my wife, but also at the same time, I have a lot of respect for quality uh, ever so much than anything else. I always want the highest quality I can afford, and in this case, I just I, I was willing to go out and spend the money to do the testing that I wanted to do on the suitcase that I, I've wanted for a long time. And uh, yeah, that's this guy. So this is the Ramoa Original Cabin. They do off, offer polycarbonate versions of this now. Uh, I think they brought it out in like the year 2000. So they've had it over 20 years, polycarbonate. In polycarbonate, you can get down into the 600s. So it's, it's a lot cheaper to go polycarbonate, obviously, than aluminum. But even those are still getting the quality wheels, the the build quality that you can come to, to love about this. Now, I will say this as well, and this I don't think is going to have any say on the quality at all. In the U.S., um, pretty much our remote luggage is coming out of Canada. Uh, up in Ontario, they have uh, a remote factory, and pretty much I think all of the stuff that in the United States, I believe, comes out of that one. I may be wrong, but I know the one that I was looking at at Vegas did. That was out of, uh, out of Canada. Um... I purchased this one from the store in London. This came out of the German factory, out of the Germany. Um, I think it's Cologne, Germany is where they make them. Uh, they also have a Czech Republic factory. Now, everything I've seen, I've looked, I've actually researched it online. This is some months ago that I was looking at the differences between the different factories they have. Um, everything at all their factories is all met to the same exact high standards. Every single one is. So I don't think the one that's coming out of Germany is light years better than the ones that are coming out of Canada. But it is something to say, because you do have to bring something like that up. This is an actual German-made one uh, versus assembled in, in, in Ontario. So, um, yeah. I have a, a, a vast regard for German quality uh, in their engineering and their manufacturing processes. Um, my last name is Schuster. I, I have a, a heavy German ancestry. So, of course, I always have that leading on me a little bit, but... Uh, a lot of my tools I own are actually German-made tools. A lot, of, Some of the drills I have are German-made drills. I just have a real high respect for it because of the quality level that they push it, put into their stuff. There's some things that are made in Japan. Low gel is, Japan, I think, Japanese. Um, I think they have really good regard of a lot of their things. A lot of stuff coming out of the United States is some of the best in class. It just comes down to the brand um, the quality level that that brand is brought up to. Um, to be honest, I'm a huge iPhone owner. That comes out of China, and I think there's no question that they are putting higher standards on their products coming out of China than anybody else. So, country of origin is a hard one to say, yeah, because it's coming out of that country, it's better. I disagree with that statement. I think it's put to the, the quality level that the company itself holds itself to. And Ramoa, I think out of all their company, all their factories, and all the countries that they make them, I think are just put to the highest level of standards of any luggage company. And I'm looking forward to putting that to the test. So, that said, I am going to have more videos coming. Probably another one prior to me going on my trip. And then I actually want to get some video footage on my trip. Also, here at the end, if you actually stayed through all of my blibbering and everything, um, I have uh, my newest YouTube channel which is Shoe Geek, S-C-H-U-G-E-E-K. Um, it's kind of, um, Shoe Geek is going to kind of be my umbrella over all of my channels. My Shoe Geek channel is a very raw video channel. It's just going to be me on my phone, essentially more than anything else. Me taking vi small videos when I receive a product or if I see something. I actually want to start doing like uh, uh, reviews of maybe some of the hotels I'm staying at in some of these locations. 
um, cruise ship that we're going on. I want to do one on there. I want to do stuff like restaurant reviews as I do things. No schedule at all. Just do them as I see them, right? Do the videos as I, as I get to them. Um, so if you want to check that out, that's at ShoeGeek. I'll put a link down below. And I want to start building that up a little bit because that's going to help bring more products in. And you'll, if you if you subscribe to that, you can kind of probably see some of the stuff as it's coming in. And if you go on there and you leave, excuse me, gas. If you leave a comment on any of those videos on a product, like for instance, I did a video on this one, um, the, one the day I received it from DHL. It was great. I was looking forward to it. So I unboxed it on there. Um, if you do any kind of comments on there before I actually get to it on this channel, if you have a question or anything, I'm going to make sure that I actually address it on here. Um, same thing with this video, though. I am going to be doing more videos on this. If you have something specific you want me to answer or you maybe you notice something that you don't like about it, please put it down below uh, or head over to Shoe Geek doing it on that video or just email me at TechGooch. Uh, so contact at TechGooch.com and uh, I'll get it and then I'll make sure to push it into the video with this guy because... I want to do a couple videos on this guy yet. One of them is definitely be in use. And then after I use it a few times, I want to get a kind of a year in review, I think is kind of what I'm doing. It kind of like I did my couch. If you remember that, I don't know if you've seen my, my love sack videos. So anyway, that's a lot of talking. I don't know, 30 minutes of talking. So thank you for watching to the end. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, like, comment, share, subscribe. If you can for me, I'd appreciate it. Maybe just start leading the videos with that. Eh, what is what it is. Thanks for watching. Catch you on a future tech gooch. See you soon.